Defendant Marlon Thomas Jr. appeals as of his right of convictions following a jury trial of second degree murder and possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. The court sentenced Thomas to serve consecutive terms of 25 to 50 years imprisonment for a second degree murder conviction and two years imprisonment for a felony firearm convictions. We affirm. And consecutive means he has to f serve the two years for the pistol, then the 25 for the murder. So that's 27 years all in total. If they said concurrently, the two and 25 would have ran together. So he would have just did 25 years. Thomas shot Rakesha Brown while the two men sat inside a car park near the home of Brown's grandmother, Barbara Hemfield. According to Hemfield, at about 11.30 a.m., she went out onto the porch to talk to her granddaughter and her granddaughter's friends. She stepped down from the porch and saw that Thomas was on top of Brown's inside of her car, which Brown had borrowed from her earlier that day. She heard two shots. Brown got out of the driver's side of the car and ran into the house. Thomas got out of the passenger side and ran into the street while continuing to shoot at Brown. Hemfield's 11-year-old granddaughter also saw the shooting. According to the granddaughter, she was playing with her friends on Hemfield's porch when Brown parked the car near the house. She saw Thomas and Brown together in the car and then heard Brown say, quit playing, dog. She heard a few gunshots and saw Thomas bent over on top of Brown. Both Thomas and Brown got out of the car. As Brown went inside the house, Thomas continued firing the gun. Matthew Hemfield, Brown's uncle, testified that he heard one gunshot and then Brown said, man, he shot me. Matthew helped Brown get up the steps into the house. LaDonna Lewis testified that she lives across the street from Hemfield. According to Lewis, she was watching television when she heard a loud pop. She looked out the window and saw Brown in his car. Brown said, why'd you shoot me, dog? Lewis heard a couple more pops and overheard people screaming that Brown was shot. According to Salvador Rodriguez, he was working at a store during the time of the shooting, Thomas came in the store like he had been running or sweating pretty badly, took off his gray and orange hoodie sweatshirt and ran from the store. Jackson Police Department Officer Peter Possum testified that he was dispatched to the area of the shooting. As he was watching the area, he saw Thomas who matched the description of the suspect. According to Officer Possum, Thomas appeared out of breath and poked out between a hedge row. Officer Possum left his vehicle, drew his weapon, ordered Thomas to get on the ground and arrested him. Jackson Police Department Officer Robert Nopi testified that he found a 380 caliber semi-automatic pistol behind the store in which Thomas discarded his sweatshirt. It had four bullets in the magazine but no bullet in the chamber, which led Officer Nope to believe that it had been fired or that it had not been fired. He also found a 22 caliber round revolver that Thomas admitted belonged to him. Officer Nope testified that the revolver had fire casings and one live round in the chamber. Thomas testified that both he and Brown sold marijuana and carried handguns. According to Thomas, on the day of the shooting, he and Brown attempted to meet a uh, marijuana buyer at a nearby store, but the buyer never appeared. They left the store in park. While Thomas used Brown's scale to weigh the marijuana, Brown asked to take half to sell it on consignment. After Thomas refused, he looked up and saw Brown had a gun. According to Thomas, Brown demanded the bag of marijuana. As Thomas was passing items over, Brown placed his gun on his lap. Thomas reached for the gun, and it fell to the floor. When Brown bent down to retrieve the gun, Thomas drew his own and fired because he was frightened. He grabs Brown's gun off the floor, unlocked the passenger door, and left the car. He continued to fire toward the car because he was afraid. Thomas admitted that he had asked his girlfriend over the phone what the media was saying about the case. Their recorded telephone call was admitted and played for the jury. The jury acquitted Thomas of first degree premeditated murder but found him guilty of second degree murder. Thomas now appeals. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. I'm take a sip of this water real quick. Hold on. Bro said, Marlon said they got in dispute over dope. Dog pulled a gun out on him. What went wrong in that story to me, what was crazy is why he, why did he keep firing after he got out the car? Now they can get him for that, but that should have, I, I think that should have been more of a, a manslaughter. 
and he got the max sentence on manslaughter, not second degree murder. Ain't nobody just carrying around two guns on him. You got a 38 and a 22 on you. So it seems like Dog really had a gun. And even if that situation didn't happen, just the point that it could have happened, maybe this needs to be looked at again. When I first read the case, I didn't see that part. When he was, they was first telling me about it, I didn't see that part. Wow. That's why I tell you, man. Let, let, let's just say that the, I was in a car with a guy, and he had a gun on him. We was wrestling, and I pulled out mine and shot him. And I got out the car. And I didn't shoot. I still probably still be in jail because it's hard for self-defense for a black man. Let's just be honest. And then you out there in Jackson, Adrian area. That's crazy. So you, I say that to say this. You shouldn't even put yourself in a position like that. It got to be clear, straight up, black and white, no in-between. Ain't no gray area with you when you got pigmentation and you a drug dealer and you got a criminal record. Ain't no in-between. It's very hard and very rare and seldom that you get the in-between thing. This case crazy. Maybe he might get back on appeal. Maybe he need the right lawyer or whatnot. I ain't gonna lie, but reach out to like David Cripps or uh, Gabby Silva or Mr. My Not Guilty and see if they can help him file an appeal and get a reduced uh, sentence. But you still gonna be doing around 14 years. But I look 14 and 25, that's a big difference. That's a big 11 year difference. You feel me? My math, could, no, excuse me. Uh, he doing 27. Yeah, so if you can get 12 plus 2, the, the, the 14 from 27, that's a real big difference from the from the 13. But that that's crazy. Like I said, don't put yourself in these predicaments, man. Even if somebody breaking in your house, you shoot them in the back, you're going to be in jail if you don't tell the right story. You feel me? It better be uh, he turned around as I was shooting or something like that. And it better all line up and add up. You feel me? And I want y'all to know, too, let's say somebody tried to rob you and you shot them. If you still a felon and you got that gun, you still getting charged with the gun. They can still charge you with the gun. And if it don't really draw outrage from the community, you might be out of there for that two years. You feel me? Or they might give you the one for the felon in possession, depending on what your criminal record is. And hopefully it ain't your second gun case. You're going to have five, six years to do. So remember that. Even if you like, hey, whatever I do is out here in self-defense when you got that pistol on you and you, you know you're a little braver than you usually would be, Think about that. You, do you still want to go do those two years? Or you still want to go do those uh, five years before you do your, you know, even if you're defending yourself? You might just want to uh, fire your weapon to, to disarm them or, or whatever the case may be. But when you kill them, and, he going, and, and the police got to get involved and they're going to look at, just know you're going to deal, you're going to have some consequences and repercussions behind it, even if you was in the right. You feel me? Peace and blessings be upon y'all. Big five, do things the right way. Even Damn, you Randall from recess, you tell a lot. I'm like the Weight Watchers, I use my scale a lot. Stop window shopping one packs, you gon' be a seller or not. You ain't never send no bullets at them or trailer out. My bitch remind me of RJ, she always shit. They get into it with us to turn the sausage chips, they always dipping. Yeah, we could do the same shit, but I say it different. My young boys, Jehovah Witness, they be paying visits. Now you a player like you say you was for that pussy you paying, Pippin. Everything I put out so raw, you just can't sniff. I got the best O line, even on goal line, you can't blitz it. You're not a hustler, you keep getting in front of you just can't flip it. You ain't really got it, you P. Diddy, you be remixing. Oh, where just got a new Glock, <laughs> that's a free biscuit. Penny Tupac know what's up, we know on the mill ticket. They probably for your music a little more if you real with it. I get that sniff, sniff, and put my heel in. You have PlayStation party meetings, I'm about real big. I'm a SCD, I'm here, you don't like it, gotta deal with it.